Haiti and Africa. <laughs> that could be so misconstrued. <laughs> it could be misconstrued and very non-politically correct where I'm from because my wife and two children are Métis, which is a brand of Native American Indian. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. E yeah. Even though they're pale like Vikings, they are Métis. <laughs> That's funny. We have a good little we have a good little percent in our bloodline too. I think so. It's all it's all good. Yes, yes. You you've probably got some uh, some of that strong heritage in your bloodline, Robert. We're all a mix of something. I'm part uh, Scottish, yes. part Italian, part Portuguese. I mean, I've you yeah. know got it all. Yeah, I've got the Scottish in me. Really? Me, me family's from the Gorbals, so. Really? Yeah, you're shocked, yeah. The Gorbals that thankfully don't exist anymore. No, this is yeah. true. Why don't they exist anymore? They blew them up. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've, they've been done up and built for push flats there now and everything. So. Deliberately, yes, yes, they, 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 they blew the buildings up, yeah, and they've now built fancy posh apartments there now. Ah. Oh, yes, apartments, not flats anymore, are they? The apartments. Apartments now, dear. You can't call them flats. Look That's how true. American you've become. Look at yeah. you guys. <laughs> wow, that American dollar just takes it over just the It just spreads world. everywhere. What can you do? It does. It's like Typhoid Mary. Yeah. They're actually build, building million pound apartments in the center of Glasgow as we speak. Can you imagine? Million pound apartments in Glasgow. Who's going to buy them? It's like that was Vancouver. a joke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like Vancouver, Canada. Uh, the average price of a home is one point five million dollars, but most homes aren't bought by Canadians. They're mm. bought by foreigners who want yeah. property in Canada. Absolutely. And Canadians don't live in them unless they rent them from the people who own them. Yeah. So yeah. It will be exactly the same in Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile. I li Meanwhile, I live in a 150-year-old farm. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how old this farm is, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it must be at least 100 years old. Yeah. Gotta like it. There's Carol, and there's Claudia. Hi, Carol. Hi, oh, got it sorted. I'll tell you what, I'm so looking forward to going to Las Vegas. And not just because I'll be seeing all of you guys there, because it's like bloody winter here. <laughs> Honestly. Well, not. It's not here, it's the surface of the sun here. It's, I, I can't wait. I, 40 degrees in Las Vegas, I am like, yes, please, hurry up, plane. It's uh, 36 it, degrees here and then plus humidity, so. Yeah. Woo, and we don't have air conditioning. <laughs> not good. Well, me no. It's Gotta stay hydrated then. <laughs> Come here. Top it up, there you go. I'm a heavy drinker. I put tonic water and ice and strawberries in a big beer glass and drink it all day. It's just a <laughs> terrible drink. I'm, I'm glad you, you followed that statement with yep. the, the tonic water and, you know, <laughs> I'm a heavy drinker. <laughs> I, 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 first, I first found uh, tonic water and gin and loved it and then found out I didn't need the gin. So I yeah. just drink tonic water and gin. Tonic water and gin every time. Got it. You can't beat it. <laughs> My rule of thumb is if it's a drink served at a gay pride parade, it's probably my favorite. It's very masculine, like a martini or a scotch. Way too masculine for me. No, I need something much more touching my feminine side. Yeah. And Claudia is back from the Curry Death. Good job. Way to go, Claudia. Glad to have you back. Sorry. I'm sorry, Mixie's Alex. Mitzi's here. Alex talked to us about the curry. Oh, wow. Mitzi's here. Hi, Mitzi. Say hello. Hi, Mitzi. Hey, she's like, why is this blooming thing talking to me? She, yeah. she, she sits every Zoom call and listens. Oh, well, she can, she can start selling the products then, huh? Yeah, I'd love a <laughs> isogenic ice, ice doggy coat, please. Yeah. Hey, guys, just so you know, we have many, many, I mean, and all kinds of pet stories through the years, just so you know, <laughs> with, our, with our products. So do I well, give do, do I give her isopro because she needs to lose weight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Iceland shake, isopro, ionics, all kinds of stories. 
Oh, right. Okay. There, there was a there was a hint five years ago that we were actually going to go over in that direction because in America, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Mm. We actually spend more money on our pets than we do. Oh, on same pets, here. Which is yeah. why... Which is why we look like the way you do. <laughs> these, these pet owners are just crazy. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> no offense intended. I, of course. <laughs> I, I have six. I have sixteen of them, so I live in a glass house. <laughs> oh, yeah, we I just don't don't dogs, two cats, five, six, five horses, six donkeys. I love horses. <laughs> And zero saddles. We don't even ride them. We're that stupid. That's oh, oh well. Another horse loving me. Me too. I can't. Me. Oh, I absolutely love horses. I, I do. Yeah, I, I plan to have my own stables at some point. Well, let's start off with good news. Who's made some great connections this week? Anybody? Uh, I I signed someone up in uh, New York. Really? Wow! Yes. Way to go! Yeah, with the top pack. Way. Wow! Yeah. We didn't Way even to go. go to any of the other packs. We're not doing the top down. We're just doing the top. That's your top. pack. You're having it. That's the one. That's the only one. That's it. <laughs> We're screwing them in, Robert, at the top. <laughs> <laughs> one of uh, one of my mentees, Carlita, she just had a gentleman join, and he's been doing all value packs, but he's been signing up a ton of people. And because he's doing it, he's just brought on two other men, and one of them just signed up 10 value packs in two days. Um, they're just only, they're telling that's, that's the one from the Skidmore study. That's the one you want. And yeah. they're kind of rocking and rolling. So yeah. um, last week we were saying, oh, I've lost your name. Starts with a K from Arizona. Crystal? Crystal. No. Crystal. Crystal was going to be doing some more formulation with you guys as far as having the, the packs with the new pack changes. Has that gone, come about yet? Haven't had it yet. I, I I'll be sure and reach okay. out to Crystal today and get that. I think she has it done. So I just got to, I'll reach out to her today, guys. And I'll do a okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Facebook page. Because the two <laughs> things you want to make sure become a habit in your business, enrolling people with larger qualifying packs and getting a higher percentage of your people paid. Yeah. If you can create that discipline early on, it changes how the business grows dramatically. And um, it's like showing up at a construction site with, without a tool belt and you haven't brought your hammer and you haven't brought your measure, your measuring tape. Yeah. You're useless, right? Yeah. Well, in this business, the hammer and the measuring tape are assigned people up with larger packs. That's your hammer. Get more of your people paid. That's your measuring tape. And you've got to know that's how you want to qualify your actions but also your duplications. Remember, yeah. this isn't a sales business. It never was. Yeah. If you try to sell enough shakes to make a million dollars, you'd have to sell $16 million worth of shakes. So nobody's doing that. Yeah. That's not how our comp plan works. It's actually a business mentoring and training business where you show people how to get a little money back and see if that makes them interested to go after a little bit more. Yeah. Will most of them do it? No, vast majority of them won't. Cool. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Just sign people with larger packs because they stay on the product longer and get some money back for people. Try to aim for 50%. Anything after that is kind of um, decoration. Anything else you learn about building the business is kind of the decoration past that, but you have to have those two base skills. Um, be willing to start from the top down so you'll bring them with a larger pack. Use the follow-up method. We also mentioned last week about a method that Bethany uses of actually following people out. Did any of you guys get a chance to look at the six touches in the first 30 days stuff that we referred yeah. to last week? Yeah. You did? Looks at the forms. You saw the forms, okay. Uh, remember there's also a YouTube on my YouTube channel. There are five different videos that actually say those touches out to you so you can hear them fresh. Okay. So if you go to YouTube and type in PK Smith, 
PK Smith or the Evolved Economy, either one will take you to my page. And on that page, you'll see a, a file that's called PK's six essential touches in the first 30 days. And it will just say to you one by one, what are touches two, three, four, five, and six, okay? But it's just PK Smith on YouTube. And the look at the bottom, there's a file on there. Okay. Unfortunately, not a lot of training goes on about that subject, but it's essential. You have to convert people to consultant or you are just selling shakes. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Yes. I had a call that I missed the other night because of scheduling difficulties. And the leader of the group is CC Clark. And Yay. Cece Clark is a real dynamo of a young lady. You guys Cece know Cece? Clark. Yeah, she's lovely. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> I left her in the lurch, she led the crawl. And she says, you know, PK has been telling me to reach out to my nephews. Well, she's the only person in the world I know like this. She has two nephews that are professional football players in the NFL. One of them has already won a Super Bowl ring. And she has another nephew that plays on my favorite team, the LA Lakers, as a basketball player. So she has three nephews, all professional athletes at a really high level. The New York Giants, the Denver Broncos, and the LA Lakers. And she's never got them on Isogenics yet. I said, come on, call them up as auntie and ask them to look at your product line. Oh, I don't know. So she didn't have anything else to teach on. She says, you know what? I'm going to do it on the call live. So on a Zoom call, she calls up uh, oh, Talib. Tariq Talib. Anyway, he's a really nasty defensive guy for the Denver Broncos who has a Super Bowl ring. Um, and he says, sure, Auntie, I'd love to look at it. Here, send me some stuff. So she sends him a bunch of stuff, and he actually finds the performance pack that he wants before she can even offer it to him. But she was reluctant for months to reach out to him. Now, since then, I've got another team member who has signed up the, the chef for the Denver Broncos. Well, there's so much isogenics being used by Denver Bronco players already. He makes the shakes for guys. He has isogenics in the kitchen to make the shakes for the guys cool. that have shakes. Um, and of course, when Cece's nephew heard this, oh, I've heard about this. I've got guys that are doing this. Now for her, the pitch point was, he said openly, I want to play till I'm in my 40s, like Tom Brady's saying. I'm 29 years old now. I want to play for another 15 years. She said, well, then we've got to work on how do you recover? We've got to work on healthy aging and we've got to work on your nutrition. And he's in. Now, she was suffering what everybody suffers from, the 500 pound iPhone. Have any of you ever suffered from the 500 pound iPhone? You know you're supposed to call someone, but a little story in your head of, as to how the conversation is gonna work out turns the iPhone into 500 pounds. <laughs> Love that. 500 pound iPhone. And it's because of the story. Now, I'm going to go back into your British roots. There was a book written in England called Pilgrim's Progress. And okay. the main character's name was Christian. And Christian was captured by the giant of despair, I think his name was. And he was put in a dungeon. And what he did was, he said, you know, tomorrow I'm going to kill you in a horrible way. And then I'm going to eat the flesh off your bones. So it's probably better that you kill yourself tonight. So Christian prays that night and says, no, I can't kill myself. I'll just have to face whatever I face. And the giant opens the door and he's still alive. Says, oh, you're still here. Well, yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to kill you tomorrow. You, you should, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow is going to be worse. In fact, I'm going to find a worse way to kill you tomorrow. So closes the door. And Christian says, no, I'm not going to kill myself and prays through the night. And he opens the door the next day. You still haven't killed yourself? No. And Christian realizes this giant has never killed anybody. Despair killed them. Mm. The giant didn't. A story killed them. The giant never laid a finger on anybody. It's the stories we tell ourselves yeah. that turn a five ounce iPhone into a 500 pound iPhone that we can't possibly pick up 
because we've told ourselves a story about what will happen when we pick it up. <laughs> Meanwhile, if we tell ourselves a positive story, I was watching the opening scenes of The Mummy with Tom Cruise, and they're on what they call the Vomit Comet, and that's where they take the plane up and arc it so that you have 30 seconds of zero gravity and you just kind of float through the air. Well, if you tell yourself a good story, you're now on the Vomit Comet, and your iPhone doesn't weigh anything at all, and it floats towards you, and it automatically dials the next number. Why? <laughs> because you're telling yourself the right story instead of the scary story. Michelle, how did you sign up someone from New York? You don't live in New York. How did you sign them up? You know what? It was a complete fluke. Um, <laughs> and and I'm, I'm not saying that to impress anyone. Um, it's actually, well, we're not exactly friends, but it's someone that I've known for a while. And we kind of chat once in a while here and there. And um, we were having a chat and um, I told him I was coming to Las Vegas and he said, oh, what are you going to Las Vegas for? And of course we got into the conversation and he said, oh, I used to use blah, blah, whatever product, beach body, whatever crap that was, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I said, well, since you know, you're know you into health and fitness and you obviously want to look after yourself, why don't you look at you know the stuff that I'm doing? So he did and we're on a Zoom call Next thing you know, and of course, I hadn't upgraded to international, so I give him my website. He can't see the products because it doesn't show him. So we ended up screen sharing and going through all products and blah, blah, blah. And I said to him, you know, I have to upgrade to do this. So if you're serious and you actually want to buy some products, whatever, then I will upgrade my membership now for you and we will get this done. But of course, me as well, it was kind of a learning curve for me because all of a sudden it was like, oh shoot, mm -hmm. what products do I recommend them? Because there's more products than what we have here. <laughs> so that was that whole thing. Yeah. And, and yeah, he bought, he bought the pack and he signed up and he's actually coming to Las Vegas. <laughs> so... Yeah. Wow. You He's coming to you Las Vegas. The story well, there when you shared your story from New York. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. so let's take apart Michelle's story just a little bit, right? Um, this isn't someone that she knows that well. She knows them no. a little bit. So uh, I don't need to be bosom buddies with someone to enroll them, no. right? Uh, I don't have to have been using the product for a year to tell them what happened to the six month mark. No, no, just scientifically it works. Don't worry about it. Now, one of the things Michelle did that she might not known if she did, she utilized the could you do me a favor response. <clears throat> now you're going to laugh at this, but good people love to respond to the could you do me a favor. They do. Why? Because it makes them feel great because they're doing something good for you. So I know she didn't orchestrate this, but the whole idea of the international licensing was a little bit of a, could you do me a favor response? Yeah. Guess what? People love to do favors for people that they know, like, and trust. Do a friend do a favor. <laughs> well, he saw, yeah. obviously, I was prepared to pay for the international yeah. membership if he was prepared to buy the products. Yep, yep. There was, there was a leverage conversation going on, but the premise behind it was a, could you do me a favor? Yeah. If you can get that as almost a, uh, a Tourette's thing that just comes out of your mouth, <laughs> you can't help yourself but saying that, you're gonna find that people like to do that. People like to, respond in that situation it's why in canada no one calls caa at a, a shopping mall if your battery's dead you just open your hood why the next person that walks by and says your battery dead yeah i got jumpers i'll be back in a second we don't know each other so what your battery dies in the cold it's just part of being a canadian yeah but you're gonna get dirty we're canadians we can jump a car in 30 seconds we've been doing this our whole freaking life I'm not gonna take any time and karmically you're kind of saying and the next time someone will do it for me and yeah. guess what the next time someone does it for you why a stranger won't go by an open hood they just won't 
Why? We're Canadians. No. <laughs> we'll probably say, sorry, it took me so long to get here. I was shopping. I could have got here a little sooner. And, and sorry, I'm two, two worlds over. I'll be here in just a minute. And we'll find some way as a Canadian to say sorry six times while we save your life. But that's because we're Canadian. <laughs> the, the British say sorry for everything. Mm. And they export it to Malawi. But in Malawi, <laughs> they don't just say sorry. They say, sorry, sorry. One story is not good enough. Sorry, Double. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, and, sorry. And, they'll, and they'll apologize for things they had nothing to do with. I'll say, oh, I fell and hurt my knee. Oh, sorry, sorry. You weren't there. I know, but you're hurt. And I'm so sorry, sorry. <laughs> cool. I guess we'll blame you for gravity. Okay. You're taking all the fault for gravity. Why? Good British upbringing. We, we stand in line very well. We apologize very well. It's just part of being a part of the realm. We say that to the Americans just to rub their nose in it just a little bit. It's okay. Bethany and Robert will still love us because they're great. Oh, yeah. The British know how to cue, all right. They know how to stand in line. That's for sure. Think right now, though, of who you haven't talked to with that mindset of, hey, could you just do me a favor? Not thinking, well, I know this person's going to say yes. This person has already said to me they're interested. No, I'm just going to ask you as a favor to look at the information. Could you do me a favor? Would you give it a look? Right? Um, it's why we refer to those um, Isagenix whiteboard videos. There's 20 of them. They're little short animated videos. And they're all on different subjects. Mm -hmm. That's an easy way to start a conversation with someone completely cold. Hey, could you yeah. do me a favor? I, I saw on your Facebook page that you're going to be in a, a marathon coming up. We've got amazing athletic performance products that are really maybe meet your needs. Take a look at the video. Could you do me a favor and just message me back with what you think about it? Now, that's not a phrase we like to use. What do you think about it? The phrase I like to use is, tell me what you love about it. Because I don't care what you think. Yeah. <laughs> right? I don't want you to get intellectual on me. I just want you to say, so what do you love about that video? Well, I love that you're getting these kind of responses. You know, what's my next step? Our mistake is we're thinking that there's no marketing in network marketing. There's tons of marketing in network marketing. Yeah. And you've got to be willing to come from that kind of out of the blue touch or you're not going to be having enough people looking at your information. You probably don't recognize this, but the advertisements you're watching on TV, you're only watching them because they're tied to the TV show you like. So the commercial is playing a could you do me a favor game on you and you didn't know they were doing it. Because <coughs> they're Except leveraging you're like me likes. and you record everything and you don't watch the commercials, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, DV, D, DVR. 30 yeah. second, 30 second, 30 fast second. Forward, fast forward, fast yeah. forward. I haven't, seen a, I, I haven't seen a commercial in years either. I know, they're evil. Can the rest of you think of some people that maybe you could take a could you do me a favor posture with that you yes. haven't yet? Mm. Alex, people come to mind as he give you that idea, yeah. Alex? Yeah, uh, our next door yeah. neighbor, who shall we say is a very large lady who started to do more walking, so she's interested in losing weight. Good. Uh, but we've never really talked to her. But I suppose I could do, can you do me a favor, have a look at this. I was wondering how to yeah. approach it, actually. But that's a very good way of approaching, I think. There's yeah. no judgment. Other than asking her if she wants to lose weight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not with a shocked look on your face. <laughs> no, don't do that. I have, just, a, um, I have a, could you do me a favor that I used actually just a little while ago. I left a, a voice message through Facebook. I have a friend that travels on a sailboat all around the world and she's going to be in the States. And she said, why don't we connect on August 14th? We set a time. I mean, this was like a month ago. She said, and I'm going to get my family started on Isagenix. I said, great. Well, I don't know if you saw, but the company's doing a promotion that ends on August 13th and I intend on winning a thousand dollars. So I um, left her a voicemail saying, Hey, Christelle, you know, I know that we're going to get your family started on August 14th. Is there any way we can chat on my birthday, which is August 13th? Because my company has a contest. And, you know, since we're going to be placing your order anyway on the 14th, would it matter if we talked one day sooner? Just please let me know. Could, we do, could you do me that favor? 
I use it all the time for all sorts of things. It definitely works, guys. It makes the other peer person feel good and a little superior. And people like feeling superior because they're doing you a favor. Wow, I'm doing it. Wow, I'm doing a solid for Bethany. Wow, I'm a good person. Yay. It makes them feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. By the way, I remember Craig Fields three years ago. He wanted to hit Crystal Executive. And so everyone he enrolled, he said, could you do me a favor? I've got to help seven people get their products paid for in the next seven days. Would you mind considering sharing with your friends today before you get your product? He made seven consultants in seven days. And he was just honest. I'm in a business, I'm in a, I'm in a contest with my company and I've got this great bonus coming if I can just help seven people get their products paid for in the next seven days. Would you mind being one of the people that I got some money for them? And they went, you're going to get a prize for giving us money? Well, I'm not going to give you the money, but yeah, I only win the prize if I can help seven people make a few hundred dollars back. Would you be willing to be one of my people? Seven people in seven days said, sure, we'll let you get us money. Okay, yeah, okay, we'll do that. And boom, he made seven consultants in seven days. Just by taking an honest posture, and he actually, just like Bethany did, gave them the date. I have to help seven people by this date. Would you be one of them? And they said, sure, I, yeah, I'll share with my friends. It, it's, it's okay, right? What you don't know is the people that we give the most money to, which are realtors and car salesmen, we give more money to those re, uh, con, uh, salespeople than anybody else in the world. We only do it because we get along with them. We want to do business with people we know, like, and trust. Um, and it's, it's a posture you've got to be willing to do, but it's a posture that will make you feel good and the other person feel good about what they're doing. So Bethany, Michelle, signed this, this person up from, from New York with a top pack just over, over Zoom. So yay, Michelle. Yay, Michelle. Congratulations. Hi. I, didn't give her, I didn't give her any other options on the polo. I just said, this is the one you want to sign him up with. <laughs> yeah, and he kept saying to me, is there a lower package that I can get? And I was just like, no, this is this the is one the you want. This is the only one I know of. <laughs> you know, this is the one I've been advised to tell you. What, what do you want me to say? And he was like, oh, I wasn't really planning on spending that much. You know, I'm willing to buy some, but, you know, and I was just like, well, you know, you're either serious about your health or you're not. And, he, I, I, and I think I'm really comfortable. I'm com I, that might not work for everyone, but I'm really comfortable in that place, you know, of saying, well, you're serious, so where's the problem? And he was kind of like, oh, you know, it's like, that's, that's a chunk of money and, you know, and I, I, I wasn't even planning on spending any money. I didn't even know you did this. And I was just like, well, no, you do. So what's it going to be? You know, and I was kind of a bit cheeky. That's my style, you know, and a bit possibly flirty a little bit. <laughs> and um, there he was two days ago telling his daughter how I forced him to buy the products. And you forced him. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm... Come to I never forced you to do anything. I just really encouraged you. <laughs> <laughs> and forced him to go to Vegas. American Express. I, I didn't force him to go to Vegas. He booked his flight. Like, wow, yeah. He apparently really wants to meet me in person. <laughs> hey, PK, just, 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 one, uh, just one reminder too. Michelle, you're awesome. But, uh, one reminder is that when it comes to these trips, you know, that conversation came about because you said you were coming to Vegas. So my point is that all of us go to events all the time. So find as much opportunity as you can to say, oh, by the way, I just came from blank, or I just attended blank. And it, it all, it's, a, it's a wonderful organic way for people always to, oh, why were you there? Where'd you go? So it's a wonderful, and, and we, can use, we can use like a big trip like this, guys, for the next six months, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. Now, uh, will the United Kingdom be having 
similar type things? I, I don't know the schedule of those kind of things when we open new countries, Robert. Can you fill us in on that kind of idea? Uh, yes, regional the, stuff for them? Yes, and the team knows. Uh, we have we already have ICUs on the calendar. We have university in action. We have, uh, there's going to be an NYKO in uh, the UK. They're going to have the yearly celebration like we do. So pretty Perfect. much all the, we're taking the core four events and transporting it across the pond. So. That's fantastic, guys. I think for me, um, if I can just say, I mean, when Yvonne and I told people that we were going to the event in London, they weren't that fussed. I've got to be honest, they were just like, oh, great, you're going to an event at Excel. Mm, good for you. Have a great weekend, you know. But people I know in the States, because I actually know quite a lot of people in the States, funnily enough, when I say to them, oh, I'm coming to Las Vegas, for the, they're like, wow, what are you coming for? What do we, you know, what, why are you flying out there? Why Vegas? Why, you know? And of course, the same here. You say to someone, oh, I'm going to Vegas for a business trip. Suddenly it's like, whoa, why are you going to Vegas? Were well, you going to London six weeks ago, five weeks ago? They weren't interested in the slightest. Yeah. So... I, I would agree with that, Michelle. I mean, it's really difficult. One of the, um, I think it's one of the university, the ISU is in Birmingham. Birmingham. So, you know, how do you get people excited? Because we're going to Birmingham, which is where I live anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for goodness sake, it's the last place on earth I'd ever go for a conference. <laughs> but um, I've started to use that as well to say, well, I'm with this wonderful company and I'm going to celebration in Vegas and people are going, oh, wow, talk to me about it. So I've just got to get the dotted line sorted, sign on the dotted line. Yeah, there's, there's something about events. Um, uh, here in Team Success, it was Nancy McAllister who did her business for two years but never went to a large event. And, and openly said, you know, my husband really didn't know because he was in the military post 9-11, kind of trying to save the world because he was that kind of a soldier, um, kind of the green braze on steroids that we have in Canada. Um, but then she went to, to oh. celebration and she openly said, my pre-celebration isogenics business was just guilty purchase money. It let me buy shoes that my husband didn't know I was buying because it came off my isogenics visa card. It didn't show up as an income. It, it wasn't enough money. Then she went to celebration. She was retired in nine months. She retired from her career within nine months and said, yeah, honey, I've, I've doubled my income. You've what? She says, yeah, I've doubled my job, my paycheck. Well, then why are you going to work? She says, I'm not. <laughs> I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in my 30s and I'm retiring. Well, good for you. Well, he went on to serve mm -hmm. up until his 20 or 25th year. And just before retirement, he activated and started actively building his own position. And within 90 days, he had duplicated his military pension he would receive after 25 years of very dangerous service. He duplicated in 90 days in isogenics. Wow. And really has a calling to go to military families and say, this is the perfect business for military families. Why? Because we get moved around. And when you get moved around, your spouse has to move with you. And whatever yeah. job they had, they just lost. Well, guess what? When you own your own evolved economy business, no one steals your business because you got moved from Saskatchewan to Ottawa. Nobody cares. Why? It's an internet hookup. So we've done two or three events we'll with the McAllisters where we've explained the evolved economy specifically to military families. Uh, we were on a training with one team, and she was based in Spain. Uh, with the American military and still building her business back in California, despite the time difference, she was still enrolling people and going to executive. Why? She couldn't work in Spain and sh they needed the income. Her yeah. evolved economy business was the absolute answer. Have any of you taken a time to watch that little video, the evolved economy on YouTube? No. Check it out. Watch the Australian yeah, version. Just, yeah. The Australian version. Yeah, uh, Alex and Claudia, you've seen that Evolved Economy video? Yeah, I think so. So look at the Australian one. It's called the Evolved Economy Australia. Um, and it's a neat way to look at the business model. 
<coughs> we, our company, family company, created the term years ago. Uh, and it's a way we describe this movement that's taking place around the world, where business is more done electronically than it does in brick and mortar. And if you partner with the right company, your startup and your overhead is so low that anyone can do it. And it shows how Isagenix is that company. It's a five minute little video. Uh, interestingly, uh, the Australian version of it, subscribed to by both Tony Robbins and Eric Worre, uh looked at that model as to how to describe what's going on. Because sometimes it's hard for people to get their head around, are you selling something? Yeah. I'm not, no, I, I'm not. It's an evolved economy business. It's like Amazon, but it's only superfoods. Now, you guys don't do Amazon in the UK. What do you guys use? Yeah, we have Amazon here. Oh, you have Amazon there too? Yeah. Is it as popular as it is here? Amazon's yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Beth, Get the at a local supermarket, so favorite Amazon. Bethany Krauss, uh, she really illuminated me years ago when she was living in Hawaii. Bethany, what was the number one thing with your Prime account that you would order uh, while you lived in Hawaii that shocked me? Do you remember mm -hmm. that stupid story? Was it toilet paper? It was toilet paper, yeah. yes. <laughs> I ordered everything from Amazon. Not only that, but my Isagenix came next day air for free. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 But when people are wondering, what is this business model? Oh, what you got there? Ice of the lights? Throw one way north to me here, brother. <laughs> oh, those are not my dark chocolate ones, are they, Robert? <laughs> what did you throw at me, honey? My you're wife threw an ice. Off, Robert. You're on mute, Robert. You're you're muted, Robert. While you <laughs> chocolate, and we hate you. I know. So Alex and Claudia, uh, well, I'll, I'll get Michelle and uh, and Carol to smuggle you in some of the sea salt versions. So. I caught it, Robert. <laughs> All right. Good Yay. job, brother. <laughs> this is my uh, second one today. <laughs> Important to realize that when people have that question what are you doing? It's easier to compare what you're doing to something they already do than trying to make it out of nothing, right? So when someone says, well, what is this? Eh, it's e-commerce, it's like Amazon, just superfoods. Really, yeah, we, all I do is help you set up your account. That's all I do. You don't pay me any money. Uh, I still pay the same amount for my products as you do. I really get the most help when I can show you how to reclaim your health, reinvent your relationship with food, and take advantage of some of the referral bonuses. And that's why in the, the six touches, we make that very specific comparison. Our referral bonuses, um, we say, you know, most companies like Amazon, the number one reason why a, a person uh, chooses a product is that they got a positive review from a fellow customer. But Isagenix, uh, Amazon doesn't give you any money. Isagenix actually will. They'll pay you for a positive referral. When we make that comparison, it kind of takes the weird out of their head. Oh, yeah. why doesn't Amazon pay me? I do those reviews all the time. I don't get a cent from them. Yeah, but Isagenix does. Right? If you try to say it's like nothing you've ever done before, off goes the skepticism. Yeah. When you honestly compare it to something they're already doing, oh, I already do this. Yeah, I, yeah, I could do that. Sure, right? Michelle, you did that when you were able to do the comparison with the beach body. Oh, so you've already done stuff that, you know, tried to help you out with your health. You know about this stuff. Our stuff really works. You're gonna look it, you know, right? Comparing yeah. it to something they're already doing, not this is like nothing you've ever experienced. This is gonna be so weird. You should be very afraid. No, you shouldn't be afraid yeah. of this at all. This is normal. And he also showed me that he had boxes and boxes of the, the that other stuff he hadn't even used. <laughs> so I, I said to him, well, you know what? Because he was like, oh, you know, I've got the other stuff and I haven't even used it. I was like, yeah, but I will make sure you use this stuff. You know, I, I will be checking in on you and I'll be telling you what to do and I'll be making sure you're using it and making sure you're feeling good. And, make, and he was just like, Okay then, if you if you're gonna check in and, and he just received his stuff today, so um, excellent. We had a Zoom call while he took his first e shot. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, so and it, I have a Zoom call with him afterwards to see how he felt. So. Perfect. Now remember, when we're talking about what's the difference, customer service. Mm -hmm. Isogenics has the results it does because the field is so committed to helping people reach their goals. Mm -hmm. And remind them, 60% of the equation that leads to our powerful product transformation is your, enroll, your relationship with me. Don't avoid me. Why? Or you'll have boxes of it behind you've never opened. Yeah. We all have different options for eating better. We don't have the human support we need to actually execute it. And that's what sets us apart. Yeah. Right? Now, the other thing that uh, Cece's story about talking to her professional athlete <laughs> uh, nephews is chicken lists. Keep a list of people that it scares the crap out of you to talk to. <laughs> Write them down. Don't keep them in your head. My rule of thumb is if by reading their name, it doesn't make your butt squeak, they're not scary <clears throat> enough. They should really give, cause a sphincter moment for you. For instance, it's eight years ago. I was on Susan Sly's chicken list. I knew Susan before she was an isogenic. She was broke ass, broke ass, broke. And I was on her chicken list. I then enrolled two other people on her chicken list because she didn't have relationships with them. They were just famous people in our city that I knew, but she didn't know. You never know where your list comes from, right? Be willing to look at who are the influencers in your community. Who would be great on your superfoods? And I do mean write it down. Don't keep it in your head. It doesn't work. Write it down. And the scarier it is while you're writing them down, they're the best people to enroll. Now, it may not be that they go on to be great builders, but they might be that dud that gives you a stud. Kathy Cooper has been telling this story for years about a guy that he, she worked really hard to enroll, was a big network marketer, and he was a dud. He didn't do anything. She felt like she wasted all this energy. He introduced her to one person and that one person made her $500,000. A dud can give you a stud. So what do we do? We give great customer service. We explain how they can get their products paid for to everyone because you don't know who they're going to talk to. Yeah. These three gentlemen that uh, corporate is flying over because they're blowing it up with enrollments right now, the retired colonel and his two buddies, they came from a dud. Carlita worked her buns off with Eric Tilly, and Eric Tilly did everything. He's a three-star, about to go four-star, goes to everything, does all the homework, is so compliant, and then he enrolls a guy who's a dud. He won't show up for a Zoom call. He won't do a three-way call. He's not going to do anything the way you're supposed to. What a friggin' – he's the one that signed up the colonel. He's the one that just signed up the number one point getter in the ISA Derby right now. Wow. And he's only been in isogenics for 40 days. You never know. You, you never know who the dud is or who the stud is. <laughs> it's too soon to know, right? Yeah. That's why you do the same thing to everybody. Everybody gets the same customer service. Why? You don't know whose lives you're going to touch either directly or indirectly because you did it. That's truly a dud. In fact, I'm not even sure this Colonel's enrolling sponsors even go into celebration. And this guy's got a free ticket from the Coovers out of it. How? He's a stud. The other guy's a dud. What are you going to do? Nothing. Can't fix duds. They're just duds. But he brought in a stud. You never know. Always create a pattern that if someone follows what you're doing, it'll be to their success. Every time. Now, those that know Carlita, you know she's a really a hardworking person. And it's really funny to me, talking to Carlita for a year and a half now, <laughs> that all of, all of this is growth is going to come from someone she had nothing to do with. They just showed up. <laughs> like, now, she's got to work with them now, but she didn't enroll them. She didn't prospect them. They just showed up, and all of a sudden, wow, I've got a comet. I better lasso and try to hang on. Yikes. Why? You don't know but it does require you having a chicken list. Who's the most influential person and 
Are they so influential they make my butt squeak? Do they give me major sphincter problems? Then they're scary enough. Enroll the scary people. <laughs> I'm not sure your butt squeaks is a British term. It might be only Canadian, so you might have to translate that. Yeah, yeah we, we do use that. Yeah, we do use that. Ah. <laughs> then it it's a British term. And I'm it showing my the, Commonwealth it, background. It was the sphincter um, squeezing that I was laughing at, not the butt sque squeaking. <laughs> yes, that's what I call scary moments. They're sphincter moments. So, yeah. yeah. And, and we, my, my other favorite line, PK, is that oh, we, all, we all need to have a rubber butt. You know, we're always, we'll, we'll get bounced back, but we have rubber butt. <laughs> bounce right back yep. up and get through it again. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what's happening when you, don't have a 500 pound iPhone, you've got a weightless iPhone because you're in the vomit comet. The most successful people in isogenics have heard a whole lot more no's than you have. Yeah. Why? They don't care. Oh, what? I don't care when I hear a no. I, nope. I, spoke, I spoke to another friend of mine who, um, he lives some crazy place in the States that I can't even pronounce. And, um, he, he just said to me, oh, isogenics, oh, that stuff's full of sugar. That stuff's like crap. I, I've seen the, the, the reviews. I said to him, how old is the review that you're referring to? He said, oh, 2013. I said, that's old. That's really, really old. But anyway, it's cool. You're not interested. That's fine. I like it. And I, you know, whatever. So that's, that's cool. And I just left it at that. It doesn't bother me. It's like, okay, you have your opinion. I That's why when we ask people to Google things, we ask them to Google ISA FYI, because if you Google isogenics, our competitors have created the scam sites yeah. that say there's something wrong with isogenics. Yeah. Now, people who don't know the internet don't notice that the site was uh, shaded. The Google search had a shade to it. If it's shaded, not a white background, it means it's a sponsored site. This wasn't the result of an algorithm. That company paid Google to put them at the top of the search. And right now Google's doing three or four per search. There aren't true searches, they're sponsored sites. Now legally, they're supposed to make it very clear which is a sponsored site and which is an algorithm site. And Google hasn't been doing that. And Google is now being investigated for it and they're looking at billions of dollars in global fines because they're actually editing the truth because they're not showing, oh, this person paid me to yeah. tell this lie to you, right? But most people don't know that. They say, I Googled it, and I came up with three sites that said isogenics doesn't work, and it's got too much sugar in it, right? Yeah. Now, if they're careful, look at the address bar on the article, because some of our competitors are so stupid, their business's name is in the address bar. Well, the link that he sent me, I couldn't even open it. It just kept opening up to a page that said it would, there was some sort of error and it didn't exist. And I said to him, you're sending me something here I can't even open. So I don't know how you've, you know, you've looked at this. And I said to him, but anyway, it's cool. Yep. If that's, if the, I use the products. I know that they've made a difference to me. You've read some crap on the internet. That's fine. We can still be friends, yep. you know. That's right. And I just left it at that. Well, when Amazon first came out, I was one of those intelligent people that said, what a stupid idea. Who's going to buy a book <laughs> off the internet? Who's going to do that? That's dumb. That's not going to make any money. Uh, Bezos passed Bill Gates this week. He's now the richest man in the world. Oh, so my opinion was worth what? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly that. So a review from 2013, who knows what it was about, but they tend to be the scam sites that are sponsored sites, right? Mm. But also remember, if you're sharing a lot with tree-hugging bark eaters, you know, the people that wear Birkenstocks and have a pair of spare Birkenstocks and have four natural food stores that they go to and all that kind of stuff, they're the ones that are going to flip over the ingredients and say, oh, oh, what's this one? Oh, I wouldn't put that in there and have a conversation with you about that ingredient. <laughs> that is the same objection as the money objection. I'm afraid to take this, so I'm gonna bring up the subject that scares you. Yeah. Right? So what do you do? 
hey, it doesn't look like you're ready to invest in your health right now, which by the way, is what Michelle did when she said, well, you know, if you're not really serious about your goal, we'll just take it away. Don't chase them, take no. it away. I have take no away. desire to chase anyone or drag when, anyone up a mountain. When you're ready to get started towards your health goal, I'm here to support you. And we've got products with a money back guarantee in reaching your goals. When you're ready to do that, I'm here and waiting. Otherwise, how are the kids? Right? Yeah. How's the job? Rubber butt, just like Robert had. Rubber butt. Um, a great example here from North America is uh, a Tracy O'Malley. Tracy O'Malley is a fantastic business builder and a terrible enroller. She's not a great enroller. She hears more no's than anybody hears. Why? She enrolls less than four people a month. 3.6. She hit the million dollar a year mark at the two year mark. Why? She's not very good at enrolling, but she can sure get people paid. <laughs> that means she hears no way more than anyone else does. <laughs> In fact, she tells a story of going to an event with Kathy Cooper and Susan Sly, and she's getting out of her big Ram truck, and, and Tracy's about five foot nothing. She's climbing out of her jacked up Ram truck, going into an event, and her phone goes off. And it's a text message from her best friend. And her best friend said, if you're going forward with this isogenics, I'm never going to speak to you again. And she walked into the event with raccoon eyes because her mascara was running down her face. She sat in the front row and tried to wipe the mascara off her cheeks. And either Susan or Kathy plopped down beside her and said, you're Tracy O'Malley, aren't you? I've been hearing about you. I'm so glad you're here. And she realized some no's could be so, so painful. And if you wanted to, they'd stop you. Or you could surround people, yourself with people who are going to applaud your yeses and support you unconditionally, yeah. no matter what. That's the rubber butt, right? Now, our school systems teach us to work for the yes and avoid the no but that doesn't work in business mm -hmm. you got to hear a whole lot of no's in order to get to a yes and you've got to have that willingness circle back don't be discouraged when someone says not now why it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and the scarier the objection the more afraid they actually are of trying this and it's fear not what's the third ingredient or does this actually cost money Yes, we're not dealing in clamshells anymore. It's going to cost money. There'll be pounds involved, right? Every great person in business has heard a lot of no's. And they've embraced it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going from, I have my own skincare line, PK. You probably don't know that. But when I, I remember when I first launched the skincare um, brand, and I had so many people contact me with the most ridiculous negative feedback. I mean, one person even said, why is it not called Elise Marquez Scotland? You know, you're Scottish, you're the face of the brand, you're, you're letting go of your heritage. I mean, it's ridiculous, you know. When you, when you launch your own product, you know, and your own brand, and you've got people coming at you saying, well, why should I be bothered about that? Why does that matter? What? Believe me, you learn to not care. <laughs> <laughs> so people can say no to me from here till whenever. I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's like, oh, okay, you said no. Thank you. Next. You're just... I I used to what golf with one of the top Canadian businessmen in our country, and we were driving south to play golf, and we we're driving down the 81 highway towards New York City, and he says, you know, I can list off every exit by number, and what is the name of the town, and whether they sell good pie for the next 300 miles. <laughs> I said, okay, Dave, I'll bite. Why do you know the number of the exit, the name of the exit, whether they sell good pie? He says, well, we didn't used to sell fans. We used to sell chimney linings for people who had wood stoves. Guess what? People don't have wood stoves anymore. So we switched products and switched to ceiling fans and industrial fans. I said, okay, that's not the rest of the story. I said, he says, well, who do you think sold them? He says, but you're the president of the company. He says, 
Yeah, but back then the president of the company was also the sales team. I put them in my station wagon and I drove south and I got off on every exit to see if at this exit there was someone who wanted to buy fans. I said, okay, so you must have done it a lot. That's how you memorize the towns and the numbers. Yeah. Where does the pie come in? Oh, people buy more, fi- more fans if you buy them pie. What? Absolutely. Take them out for a good piece of pie and a cup of coffee. They'll buy 10 more fans. So I know where the pie is. <laughs> Now think of this, this guy is a multimillionaire. He has eight CEOs that report back to him. He's the owner of the top managed company in Canada. Yet, all he did was hear no. Rubber butt. Get back in the station wagon, go to the next exit, find good pie, right? And do it so much, he was then in his 60s, it was ingrained in his head. Next one is number 38 and (laughs) it's, uh, uh, Mexico, New York, and there's no pie there. Don't forget, forget go, keep going. And, and he'd know them. Why? The discipline of the pitch and being willing to turn back. Bethany Krause is, is that kind of person. Bethany Krause is the queen of the pitch. I could put Bethany into a crowd of strangers and she would come out with people signing up with value packs. Um, and she would. And 10 people might say no, but three of them are going to say yes. She is the queen of the schmooze. We should get you a tiara that says schmooze on it, Bethany. The queen of schmooze. That's a good idea. It is. It is. Yeah. The schmooze is a good word. That's a good word. That means you can walk into any situation and make the connection with the person and they want to do business with you. Right? Why? Rubber butt. Rubber butt. I, people are going to say, no, cool. What's no mean? Just means not now. I'll, I'll swing back but it is a change in our mindset. Think this week of some chicken list people and some of the could you do me a favor people. Use the leverage of the could you do me a favor. Michelle's got someone to go to Las Vegas because she leveraged the could you do me a favor, right? Because he and fancies then, you, Michelle. Oh, he does. I'm, I'm not even going to deny that. <laughs> I knew yes. that beforehand, though. So <laughs> Robert, and I, Robert and I have the same problem. We have to really turn down our sex appeal when we're in <laughs> But we do, and yeah, that's right. Boom. Him because he has hair, and me because I have no hair. But either yeah. way, we, we have to just. Yeah, but you see, PK, I have an advantage. I'm actually single. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. And you and Robert and I are. That advantage Robert and I are is going to be. Robert and I are devout old married farts. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's hey. what I mean. And we're, and we're gonna get a tear for that too. O M F. Old married farts. You're getting, you're getting mighty personal there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love you. I love you, PK. So, PK, we do have you one more time on, on this. Yes, yes. Well, we're gonna be with you many more times, but this series one more time after celebration. So. Week after. Yeah. I, I just had to check in. For some reason, on last week's call, I thought we weren't going to talk back for celebration, and I graciously admitted my stupidity to Robert, and he didn't judge me at all. He says, nope, nope, we're talking. It's okay. Yeah. I have it in the book. I just have this fear in my head that I've got it wrong, so that's okay. Okay. As, you, as usual, my wife's bookkeeping was right, and my brain was wrong. <laughs> I, I surrender, old married fart. All right. We love you. Thanks, PK. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks, PK. Bye. 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 Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night, Bethany. Bye. 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 See you Bye. Sunday. Bye. Good night, Bethany. Bye. Bye. See you Sunday. Bye. Awesome, guys. Hey, any yeah. questions? Any questions about your trip coming up? I know Claudia and Alex, uh, did you get live stream or looking at it? I, I sent yes. You okay. Yes. Uh, does everybody know about that? Uh, Michelle and Carol, do you know some of your people, if they're interested, that the live stream is a wonderful tool? You know what that is? Well, all of my people will be there, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. And uh, Thank you. Can't wait to see you guys. Give you a big hug. And uh, yes. Donna B, through the roof. We'll yes, wave at you, Alex and Claudia. We'll wave at you. Yeah. We'll make sure we... We'll, we'll, show, yes. we'll send you a, a group video shot saying, wish you were here, so. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.